So Serge, I'd like to borrow an excerpt from one of your sermon books. <laughs> A little bit of product placement there. <laughs> now, this I wanted to coin the flat human episode, uh, like the flat earthers. And the topic of conversation is, are we ignorant or are we willfully ignorant? So something came to me by way of a quote based on, um, inspired by something you'd written, and, and that was this. Are humans ignorant because lies prevail? Or do lies prevail so we can claim ignorance? And when we're looking at the state of hypocrisy in the world today, and everybody knows the level of corruption, everybody is starting to see the level of corruption that's coming out more and more in public life and, and so forth, but everyone keeps going about life the same way in a, in a, lot, of, a lot of ways. So I want to talk about lies. What is our relationship with this deliberate ignorance? And as, as my brother Jonathan beautifully said before this episode, the word ignorance, when you break it down, it's ignore. It's the right to ignore. Therefore, ignorance has to be an action. It has to be willful because it, it, the word itself proposes that there's something you're ignoring. So if you know there's something you're ignoring, there's a deeper knowing that you are refuting. That, and that's an action. So, yeah, let's, let's break this down. What truly is ignorance? If you go back to the book, and I don't, you don't need to repeat it because I know what's in there, it's the latter. It's, it's the fact that there is a demand for suitability. There's a demand for something that makes us comfortable with irresponsibility. So that's, that's, the, root, that's the root definition or the root meaning, the root um, motivation for having ignorance. If, if, if you ignore something, you can lie to yourself. And what do you, in fact, what are you lying? You're lying to your level of awareness. And if you lie to your level of awareness, you can go about your ways and, irres and be irresponsible. So basically there's something quite huge happening here because we can't ever really claim that ignorance is innocent. Because if, if we are denying our awareness so that we can go on being irresponsible, then what first is there is an awareness. If you go back to the previous episode, ignorance is bliss is one of the idioms. So it's not that ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is convenient. It's not bliss. It's convenient. It's just a convenience that it doesn't mean that the person is actually ignorant. It's not that the fact that they're getting away with being ignorant or ignoring what they're trying to ignore. It's the fact that it gives them an excuse to not have it in their conscious, cognizant present, what is in fact there to be done now and not later. That's deepened it for me because, you know, there's certain things that I know I've been ignorant to in the past and I would swear to you that I was ignorant to them. Like it's, it's a, it, the drawing in that ignorance does make your cognizant reality limited to what you know at that time. So, so there, when you're in the ignorance, you can feign ignorance, if you like, or you can claim ignorance. But what you're saying is that there is a deliberation to it because there's already an awareness behind that. So how do, we, how do we unpack that? How do we go to that awareness first and, and, and see that, that we're actually layering the ignorance on? Yeah, look, there's a, uh, if we can bring a little bit of lightheartedness to this, and there was a movie, Liar Liar, with Jim Carrey, and there was a movie about lying society with Ricky Gervais or something like that. I, it was a long time ago, and I don't watch television anymore. But um, if, we, if we said, if I said something to you and you said, look, I don't know, and you were genuine, what you really should say is, I haven't wanted to know. So that really should be the response. And if we... If we study that response rather than I don't know or I didn't know that, rather than I didn't make any effort to know that or I don't want to know that, then that sets the tone for what is in truth happening. And that exposes the convenience that we have with wanting to know or not wanting to know. 
And then that e exposes the fact that there's no such thing as ignorance. There's only intent and convenience. Whoa. Because I, I'm reminded of, of someone's mother saying uh, a few weeks ago, what's so bad with the world? Why are you doing all this universal medicine stuff? Isn't the world an okay place? You know? And, and that's, that's the perfect example because, well, no, mum. You know, one in four women are going to experience violence in their lifetime. 95% of people have a chronic illness. The world is sick. It's not a great place. And sure, we have great moments and there's lots of beauty to celebrate, but it is a total willful ignorance to say it, what's actually being said is I don't want to know about the things that, gonna, uh, that are going to inconvenience my comfort and rock my boat Correct. and shake me to the core when the whole world needs shaking to the core. There, there's lots of levels of knowing. For example, that lady could be asked, do you know that a woman dies of ovarian cancer every eight, hour, eight hours in Australia? Whoa. And then I would say, but do you know whether that actually should be the standard? Should that be the acceptable um, uh, statistic? So one, do you know the, t the statistic? And number two, do you know whether we should have that as a factor of human life? And if we study further and further what we should know, we end up with the fact that no, we shouldn't have that statistic in the first place. Not the fact that we have that statistic. The fact that we have dropped something, we've dropped the standard somewhere along the line, we don't want to know that we dropped the standard and now we, we end up with the results. So that's why ignorance is actually not about ignorance. It's about conveniently being aware or not or conveniently unaware so that we don't take our responsibility for our part in the whole. Brilliantly said, because then we look at another convenience and that is once we know the fact that's so glaring in our face that we can't refute it, that, uh, that statistic, how many women die of ovarian cancer? One every eight hours as far as, if I can, my memory serves me correctly. Okay, so one every eight hours. In Australia. In Australia, a woman is dying of ovarian cancer. That's an irrefutable fact, say, um, given that we've gotten that number right. We know that. So then the next convenient ignorance is, well, that must be because of misfortune, accident, whatever we, we look at our infirmities because of the next, the next conclusion, if we want to remain in ignorance, is to look at everything but the deeper standard that's actually been dropped. The ultimate level of I don't want to know, the ultimate definition and example of I don't want to know, I'll give it to you right now. Everything is because of energy. People do not want to know that everything is because of energy. Because if everything is because of energy, then we have to source what we are attached to, what sources us, and what energy we use in everything that we do in the way we speak, uh, um, relate, move, uh, everything is energy. Therefore, there has to be an energy that causes everything. And that's the ultimate ignorance. That's the ultimate convenience, the ultimate I don't know. Everything is because of energy, which is what I pioneered in April 1999, was one of my first um, teachings and revelation, one of my first quotes. Everything is because of energy. And so that's the ultimate form of... Uh, the, the, that's the bastion of ignorance, is denying that everything is energy. Not only that everything is energy, because uh, E equals MC squared proves the fact that everything is energy, but what's important is if you take it to the next level and you say, every, therefore, everything is because of energy, that's a completely different field because it opens us up to the, to the, the bigness of responsibility. What is it? that we're energetically doing or energetically carrying or energetically aligned to, that's going to lead to what's going to manifest. Now we're talking energetic integrity and energetic responsibility, which was my follow-up uh, teachings and revelations uh, at around about the same time, April 1999. And this beautifully ties into a previous episode insofar as what we, if everything is energy, 
and the, the form of energy we use to say parent a child or educate a child will either harm or advance them truly we can say that we're actually living in a scientifically proven era that what is not energetically of love let's call that abuse is actually impacting children such that they get illness and disease later in life regardless of whether they smoke or not regardless of whether they eat badly or not if you abuse a child they are going to get have a higher risk of heart disease later in life so that is a direct energetic impact of whether you have been truly loving with that child or not so when when we say everything is energy the hugeness of the responsibility of how we conduct ourselves comes to the fore and that's the ultimate thing that people are avoiding isn't it yes and it's going to come down thank you for all that because it's a confirmation of of again the work that was established in 1999 which is the difference between spirit and soul and the difference between prana and fire as our form of life force we are designed naturally to be um, impulsed or lived by uh, or made vibrant animated if we can say by the, by an energy called fire and fire is just uh, just a name given to a certain level of vibration, certain level of energy, energetic vibration. And prana is, is not evil, but it's actually not our, our truth. It's not the type of vibration that we, we originate from. So by virtue of using pranic energy, we become denser, more individual, much more manifested in desire, and, and therefore easier to be delineated or circumscribed by a, by a form of ideal. And that's our downfall. We don't understand, or rather we have conveniently um, uneducated or not educated the factor of, of energetic integrity into the model of life, such that we can understand that pranic energy produces individualism and fiery energy produces oneness. It's very simple. And with oneness, then we wouldn't have the problems that we're having. It's so very, very simple. But simplicity is, again, um, you know, the enemy of um, self-identification because we have to have complexity to be able to be self-identified. Because part of that is that when we have complexity and we solve the problem, we're the individual that we can champion. So that's that delineation that you're talking about, which is fueled by that pranic energy. And also what you said in there was that when you are fueled by pranic energy, you're more susceptible to ideals. So you can make your life look good, but be fueled by pranic energy. And therefore, it's not truly of the fiery nature and quality that is your natural innate quality and congruence that, that makes you uh, that vitality, that true vitality. So you can have something, someone that looks very good on the outside and is living an ideal life, but isn't that, doesn't have that fire. And so that's part of what you're talking about of the, of the evils of good you've mentioned in previous episodes as well because if you can make a life look good but it's run on a force that isn't truly you then that makes the picture look good but it abuses everyone around you and that's why you've brought in the teaching of energetic quality and, the, and energetic integrity and our ability to actually read what quality is this person vibrationally? Because if we don't have that, we are blinded by the ideals we're sold. And that, that brings me to the ideals that, if, for, for instance, the American dream. I can take that as an example. Everyone knows what the American dream is. You know, you have a house, you've got a family, you've got the car, you, you're well off, you, you live the dream. In America at the moment, middle class people are sleeping in their cars. People very quickly go from the middle class to being lost in the system, not necessarily from drug dependency or even pharmaceutical abuse, but because they've had health issues that bankrupt them. It could be a heart a disease or ongoing anxiety. They're bankrupted and then they're living out of their car, it's still going to work. There's car parks that are actually dedicated to people living out of cars and they have a communal kitchen that they've set up in the car park. And these are average everyday people like you or me that are now find themselves below the, the, the poverty line in America. It's, it's quite shocking, but 
and if if we if we just look at an ideal and the good life and don't actually energetically feel the quality of what a society is at whether it's really taking care of people whether we're really taking care of each other then we just get sold the hollywood version but in fact we're not reading what's really going on in the world and if we don't have the ability to energetically discern we're blind we're completely blind well with due respect to blindness itself as a medical condition, but yeah, we, we're, it's another word that is, it just goes back under the umbrella of convenience. We are conveniently ignoring, con conveniently blind, conveniently not choosing our senses to be aware. And if you, if you play around with the word ideal, you realize that it's an ideal. It's, a, it's the I making a deal with itself and then <laughs> trading that with everybody else. So it's an ideal, I deal with you in the way that I deal with you. <laughs> and then I have a deal with myself. So it's an ideal. And we can keep playing with that and you know, we'll probably end up being a Groucho Marx show, but- <laughs> We'll have lots of my deals as well. <laughs> exactly. So it, you know, it's, it's really a, a form of transaction. It's a deal. And it's a deal saying, I deal, do you agree or not? Then if you don't, you're out. And if you're in, you're in. And it's like trading opinion, trading judgment, trading projections, but there's nothing, there's nothing uh, truthful and whole in that. And You're when actually you have... creating a reality Correct. That, that is false and then calling it life. It's like you're creating a reality that you make true based on contracts between people's ideals. No, it's not. It's a, con it's a deal. Yeah, a deal. Yeah, it's a contract. Yeah. You're making a deal. Yeah. Ideal, and that's what it is. I deal in this, and I deal with that, and it's in my deal because it's I ideal. So, okay, let's keep playing there, but well, let's stop playing, we should say, and let's have a look at what's going on here. Because in a world of simplicity, there are no champions. In a world of complexity, there's heroes. There's something to reward. There's self-identification. There's leaders and there's people that deliver the answers and come up with solutions. So there's profit, there's reward, etc. But the idea is that we're, or the, the supposition there, the makeup, the manufacture, is that we're fighting against simplicity because simplicity doesn't deliver any form of identification. It rubs out the individualism. Uh, you know, in simplicity, we are a whole. And we're a unit of that one that flows and grows together and advances and it eliminates comparison and competition. And so we want to be ignorant of all of that, ignorant of the simplicity. We don't want the convenience of simplicity. We want the complexity and the intricacy and the self-identification that comes with everything else that is not simple. So well said, because you can see how um, that also plays into the separation of identity. You know, the ignorance is often associated with, uh, you know, racism and nationalism and, and those people. And, you know, like that's a really ignorant way of looking at the world is, the, is this separatism. But that's also an identification, isn't it? I'm, you know... I'm right wing, I have my opinions, I'm delineated by my ideals and you're wrong over there, you're a left wing, liberal, crybaby, whatever the you know, term you want to call it. It's all based on that ideal that, that you, yeah, the contract you have with your, your prism of perception that then you bludgeon onto the world and say, this is you know, how I want to live and you should be crushed. Yeah, I'm, I'm no expert on linguistics, or, nor do I know the etymology of the words, but have a look at them. Ideal, identity, ignore, all standing with I. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a correlation there that is coming from an individual, again, the word I. So an individual seeking to create something that benefits them, and then those that they, they share that creation with are those that can, that conspire to the same projection and those that don't are on the outside and they're the enemy. So, you know, the, the, the real evil is the I, you know, it's, 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 the, it's the cause of separation, segregation 
and the, the massive disproportion, as you mentioned earlier, where middle class people are living in car parks, that's disgraceful because if America once championed itself as, as, the, as the living the dream and the American dream, well, that's all gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's next? So where are we going? Where are we heading? What's the trajectory? Because everything is costing more and more. So does the whole world need to live in a car park before we go, oops, you know, what went wrong? Yeah, well, apparently 95% of people need to be ill and we still aren't asking what is wrong because we've just made sickness our new normal. There seems to be a demand for complexity. There seems to be a demand for convenience. There seems to be a demand for lies. There seems to be, and therefore, the flourishing of liars. And that's current at the moment and will be for a few more years. And people eventually will suffer, suffer enough for them to wake up and realise and the silent majority will start to open up and speak out. But at the moment, there's a few uh, heroes that are based on lies and we have to just ride the wave while it's there. And, um, you know, the reductionism of truth has made it a very rewarding way of getting about in current society. So we'll ride the wave, the wave always wins. It sunk Atlantis, it'll sink us again in a different way, this time through our bodies, through illness and disease. Wow. So basically, I'll just share one more quote from the book. Yeah, and just before, I, I just want to clarify that. The next great flood, the next great ice age is in the body. And I predicted that also in 1999. In other words, it's not an ice age in the body and it's not a great flood in the body. But the next world catastrophe is actually illness and disease. The tsunami of ill health. The tsunami of ill health, correct. And, and, in, and I include in that ill mental health as well. And so we're going to be a completely doped out society, but one that is also bankrupt. So many big changes are on their way with, with regard to systemizing the, the medical model because it can't keep up with the fact that it's making you know enormous amount of money but where is the money where the circulation has to end at some point and look they're doing a great job I'm pro-medicine but it's not preventing no. the situation well it's like before. treating people after they've jumped off the cliff it's like you, you can have all the medics in the world trying to repair people after they've jumped off the cliff but unless you work out why they're falling off the cliff or why they're jumping then why they want to jump in the why first they place. want to jump in the first place then all you're going to be doing is is tr trying to put a band-aid on a laceration or just you know trying to deal with the carnage after the fact that's the post-cause world we're seeing and we're living in that's going to bankrupt us that will eventually get us on our knees to the point where we ask the question of what happened way back there before you're even close to the edge what happened that, that's what you're talking about, isn't it? Yeah, and one more thing before you refer to the book, and, and this is a good end concluding point on the this, on this specific subject, and that is there is no profit in the answer to our root problems. There is no profit. For example, do we give the person who comes up why people jump off the bridge in the first place a billions of dollars? No, because the person who knows that answer will give it to you for free. The fact is that person is aligned to an energy, that energy impulses their body to eventually have the behaviours that lead to the state of being where jumping off a bridge is the next step as part of the pattern that they've been put into. Is the person the one who actually jumps? No. It's the energy impulsing them to jump. Because we don't think, we're not as autonomous as we think we are or imagine that we are. And therefore we realize that our only true autonomy is the use of will, which is how we align to a source of energy. And so there's your answer. It's for free. It's available. It's been there since 1999. We are what we are aligned to. And what we align to determines every, every taste, every sense, how we understand what our intelligence is and what makes up our mind. We don't have autonomy. The only form of sovereignty that we truly have is our ability to align. Once we are aligned to a source of energy, and there's only two, pranic energy or fiery or the fiery consciousness, then we are everything we are impulsed to be because we are in fact vehicles of expression. Now to the book. <laughs> we don't need the book, you just gave it to us all. That was brilliant, beautiful surge, thank you. Thank you, Rebecca.
The material in this video is based upon the principles of the Ageless Wisdom, which offers an energetic understanding of life. Any references to science are references to energetic science, as presented by the Ageless Wisdom, and not to evidence-based science in mankind's current era. Any references to specific aspects of medicine are to illustrate the relevance of energetic wisdom, as presented by the Ageless Wisdom, in the interplay of bodily illness and disease, rather than contradicting the current theories of disease causation, or in any way to replace epidemiology. The principles conveyed in this video are philosophical and religious, and thus are not verified within the evidence-based rationales and critical appraisal process of evidence-based science, including Consult 2010, Compliant Double-Blind Randomized Controlled Trials. Serge Benhayen and Universal Medicine's presentations and teachings do not diagnose, treat, prevent, or offer any therapeutic cure to any disease or illness, are complementary to medicine, and are never a replacement of, or alternative to, conventional medicine. If you have any questions or concerns about the prevention, cause, diagnosis or treatment of any disease or illness, you should consult a registered medical practitioner.